What is up people, welcome back to another video on my channel. This video is gonna be all about the six months I've just spent without any alcohol whatsoever. I literally mean not one drop since the middle of last year, been a total six months, and I'll get into all the details around that, some of the benefits, some of the considerations you may have, and some things you might wanna do before you give up, or if you're on the path, how to stay on the path of giving up alcohol for a bit. Before we get into the video, if you can subscribe down below, check out some of my work, that's also greatly appreciated, but I won't leave any more time. So so, this video is going to be all about the time I've spent without drinking alcohol. I forgot to provide a little bit of context as to why I did this, and I feel like every video starts with saying they didn't have a problem with alcohol, and that actually is pretty true. So, I didn't actually have any direct issues with drinking excessively or drinking too much, but what I wanted to do was take some time away from drinking alcohol. And the reason being is that if I look back on my entire career in the last couple of years, or even since I turned 18, whenever things were going negatively or whenever I slowed down or didn't progress as quick as I wanted was due to mainly going out and partying too much. As a 26 year old Irish dude, it's etched in our society to drink. It's just part of our culture. Irish people, UK people, even American people, it's a big part of our culture is to drink alcohol and everything within reason, whatever, like whatever way you want to look at it. But especially I found in my own instance that there was a bit of excess drinking happening for sure, even coming through university, college and whatnot. So if I go back to even when I was in university, going out, partying, whatever, that's all well and good. But if it was ever to impact me negatively, it would be when I did it too much. So there was often times whereby we would have went on parties, would have been out for a day or whatever and just drank too much, was hung over for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You know how it goes, you know how it is, right? And I feel like that's just a big part of, especially young men, and this is what I wanna discuss, is that young men who are in that loop of going out, partying, it can hold you back significantly. Especially as I moved on with my career, you know, you work Monday to Friday, and then at the weekend, you want to relax, chill out. If I went out partying on a Saturday or a Friday, I would feel it for several days. And the way I've gone with my kind of career at the moment is with my podcast, the fact that if I want to grow my podcast and push it forward, I have to do this at the weekend. So it's very difficult for me to do anything like that if I am out partying all the time, right? That's one aspect. The second aspect is around the culture around it. I feel like that it's a huge part that everyone just forms to. It just does a massive led of conformity towards this is normal this is we, we've just normalized this progress and when I look back on everything that I've done it definitely did slow me down at times and it's not about being a productivity machine it's just about identifying weaknesses that you have in your habits in your routines and looking for ways to actually fix those gaps the other aspect here is as I wanted to move faster in my career or as I wanted to grow my business or anything around there, I noticed that I am not the most naturally gifted individual. There are some people, you could even think of some professional sports stars or whatever, who can go out and drink and then show up on the field the next day and be in great shape, go around like whatever their sport is and excel in that area. For me, I'm not the smartest, the brightest, I'm not the sharpest, I don't have the best concentration. In terms of training and nutrition, I'm not the fittest, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the strongest. So I had to look at my life in general and see where are my gaps, okay? And if I'm not naturally gifted at something, I need to improve on that in other ways. Cutting out alcohol for a period of time is what I need to do, then that's what I need to do because I don't have that edge. I feel like that's an aspect that people can clearly move out of their life and make it quite clearly, but they kind of hold on to it due to social pressures and whatnot. So as I wanted to get more serious in my career, I realized that if I keep going out at the weekends, I'm just hung over when I want to get some work done at the weekends, I can't necessarily work to the best of my ability. Not saying other people can't do it, but in my instance, from my personal experience, I wasn't able to do it. A lot of questions fire off when you think about quitting alcohol. So when you're thinking of taking a month off or two months or three months off, a lot of things pop up and a lot of it is to do with other people in social settings that I found. So one in particular is what will the guys think? What will the lads think of me if I stop drinking alcohol? The way I kind of think about this is if your friends are concerned about you giving up alcohol, then maybe they're not the best friends for you. A lot of people, if you tell them that you're giving up alcohol and if they get super defensive and think, oh, why are you doing that? Like you should enjoy yourself. You should be balance and all this stuff. It's mainly due to their own insecurities. They feel insecure that you are changing and you want to do something different. And as a result, they project that negatively on you. I've never felt any 
you know, negative feedback from my friends because they're genuinely my friends and they're happy that I'm happy and I'm happy that they're happy. And if they want to go and have a drink, that's completely chill. But if I didn't want to do it in that instance, it's completely fine. I can sit at a dinner, get a great meal, order sparkling water, and it's completely chill. That's a big thing around guys and maybe that your friend group are not the right friend group for you. The second thing that I feel is very big amongst men is dating. So it's very, very common to go out on a date and go for a couple of drinks and you know generally you can get to know a person maybe a little bit better and people feel a bit more comfortable with it. I do find that if you find yourself in that scenario and similarly enough if you tell a girl on a date or conversely tell a guy on a date that oh I'm not drinking for a while I'm taking some time off drinking they may get quite defensive and say oh you're a bit of a bore whatever you know you're not actually that you know you should just lighten up a small bit that's mainly due to their own insecurities as well. How I faced this, and I learned this from Mike Thurston's video originally where I first got the idea from around six months ago, was tell someone that I'm focused on even growing my business or I'm focused on my career. But if you feel a small bit kind of self-conscious about saying that, just say you're taking some time out just to work on like your fitness, your health, and you want to just get a bit healthier. Again, people will respond quite positively to this if they are your friends or if there's someone that you should be quite around because there's nothing wrong with taking one of the variables out of your life, providing that you're pretty happy with it and that's what you want to do. Another question people always kind of ask is like, what will I do when I'm out? And this is what I was kind of concerned about too, because, you know, as a young male who's out all the time or was in nightclubs for a majority of their 20s, you do feel like, oh, what's going to happen if I don't drink? Now, one of the factors I want to explain as well is when you remove the element of it, you remove that craving to be out and go out all the time. But if you do find yourself in those settings and if you do find yourself like that, you want to speak to people and you want to be out and you want to be in that setting, if you want to go dating or whatever, is that you can just get a glass of sparkling water, get something to replace and it's completely chill. How I find this another example is if you're in like a smoking area, it's so easy to pick up a menthol cigarette and just start smoking because it's the society norm. And even when I found, especially when I was single, when I was younger, I didn't want to be in like a loud nightclub. I wanted to be in a smoking area. That's where you're going to meet people, whatever. And it was so easy for me to fall into smoking cigarettes because you're in that environment. That aspect is called environment design. You put yourself in that environment and it's conducive to doing those activities. So by removing the element of drink, you may not want to be out 24 seven. You might actually want to go out maybe once or twice a week. You can go to a different style of bar. You may not want to go to a straight up generic nightclub, whatever. But I did find that when you removed that element of it, the environment design was slightly different and you don't even feel inclined to do it. And I want to go into a bit more detail on that later. But the last aspect I wanted to get into on this is some of the concerns is if you feel like you don't need to, then you don't need to, right? But if you want to achieve a big ass goal, like you have a big target you want to hit, whether it's fitness related, career related, business related, relationships related, you may need to make sacrifices. Just like I said in the beginning that I'm not naturally talented, I'm not naturally talented at jack shit. So if I want to achieve a big ass goal, I need to make sacrifices. And quitting alcohol allowed me to give the excess time into working on bigger goals. And I think that's what you need in terms of the feedback loop. It's like, if I'm not in a pub on a Friday or Saturday, if there's no real thing I'm working towards, then it's kind of like, well, I feel like I should be. But if there is a big goal you're working towards, then as a result, you will not feel negatively. You won't feel kind of bad about the scenario because you're working towards something that's very positive. So it's kind of like not sacrificing long-term goals for short-term happiness. We are in this era of instant dopamine gratification and whether it's alcohol, whether it's social media, whether it's like porn, whatever the aspect is, it gives you instant gratification. And that's what I wanted to remove. The alcohol for me was what I was able to get out of my head so that I could focus on big goals and just go fully hog into that. That's what I really wanted to do. Now, during this period, I didn't really set out to do six months. I just kind of wanted to take a bit of time out of drinking. And as I continue down this path, I fell deeper and deeper into the benefits of doing this. Now, what happened here was as I went week to week, instead of being out of the weekend, how, what I found is I could wake up Saturday fully refreshed, wake up Sunday fully refreshed, wake up Monday fully refreshed and start doing other aspects. Now, I live in a tropical climate where it's 30 degrees every single day. Therefore, I have much more options to me than sitting in a room being super fucking hungover. I can get up, go to the beach, go to the pool, go to the park. I can spend a lot of time doing outdoors activities, which is what I love to do. I'm a very active person to begin with, so I'm able to explore those different aspects. So just for general routine and sleep, improved massively. So I was someone who struggled with sleep quite a lot. 
And even in my partier days, if I was out till six o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning, what would happen is the knock on days have gone on. Now we've seen the use of wearables. So I'm using a Fitbit. You may use a Whoop band and that tests your HRV, heart rate variability. And that can assess whether you're in a nice readiness state to go and work out again. A lot of the numbers that come back from drinking alcohol are wild. It puts you in a very, very low state whereby your body is very stressed and it negatively affects it. Therefore, by extension, by removing alcohol, my sleep just skyrocketed. I just was able to improve my sleep consistently. I get around seven and a half hours a night. And for someone who slept six, five, four hours sometimes, that's actually very, very helpful. So that was the biggest thing. It was just the overall energy I had and the overall mood. Now I touched on the, f- the fear of missing out as well. When you cut alcohol out of your day and your focus is not going to a nightclub at the weekend, you completely forget about that. The bigger goals you want to tackle, you can come and tackle. That's what I really wanted to focus in on and I was able to get down as well. Other aspects of my life, which is outside of you know, my career, my business is mainly focused around health and fitness. Now, as I have a coach recently, and in the last six months, I've been working with with a coach. I kind of felt to myself that if I'm paying all this money to have a coach guiding me through my health and nutrition 24 hours a day, then why am I going out and putting this toxic shit in my body at the weekend and just going back to not zero, but taking two steps back? It feels like this is not a good idea. So the second I quit alcohol, my performance improved in the gym quite a lot because I was sleeping better and I was resting better. I've put on a lot more muscle and size in the last you know six months and I was able to do that by extension of having a coach but also by extension of quitting alcohol it all just works together same with my food choices so I do have a structured meal plan for sure but when you're not hungover, you don't have that craving for sugar, for salt, whatever, and you don't want to take that day off to just lounge around and watch Netflix and, you know, just waste your day. So I was able to get much more granular on my nutrition, and now I generally will go Monday to Sunday pretty even. And this is a big thing that I want to kind of work towards personally myself. It's just more stability with emotions, with energy, with tiredness, just much more stability. And the reason why is because previously, if I had swing highs of you know stress and swing lows of tiredness, it was very difficult to get anything done. Now, I'm still a productive dude, I would say, but I mean, getting the most out of my, my day, I wasn't necessarily able to do it. And that is a big benefit that I've seen. Other areas include focus and concentration. So when I'm fully rested, I'm definitely able to sit down and work much cleaner now i've removed other distractions from my life like notifications a few other things from my phone but when i just sit down to get some work done if i'm writing content if i'm writing if i'm recording a podcast whatever when i have much clearer focus i feel like i can concentrate on my goal much better i have the macro level of what i want to achieve and i have the micro level of the day-to-day ins and outs now it's definitely a combination of things i don't think it's like removing alcohol that does this but it's a combination of other factors but By not doing that, I'm definitely able to focus a lot clearer, which has been very, very helpful because I've been able to just stay at a consistent level. And that rolls into the mood aspect too. So whether you, you know, agree or not agree, like a majority of us work 50, 60 hours a week and it's not even a flex, just like a part of reality these days, you know, especially when you're trying to do multiple things, the hours stack up, okay? And because of that, when your sleep goes down, when your tiredness, your mood can go pretty quickly. And I, when I look back on some of the, times where I was super hungover you're just kind of moody you know you're sitting on the couch you're like sitting there like watching Netflix and you're just kind of moody and kind of tired I was able to pretty much remove that aspect so general mood improved and a big thing that I hear a lot of people struggle with too is the anxiety around it so when I'm super hungover (laughs) even for a couple of days and I'm kind of tired the fact that I'm tired and I'm trying to get stuff done means like I'm just kind of like out of sync and I get quite anxious so I could even be working like trying to get stuff done really quickly and ends up being shit work, or just I build it up in my head, procrastinate on ideas, because I'm just kind of like all over the place a small bit, and I get more anxious with it. And again, by removing that aspect, I get down into a nice, calmer state. And the last aspect I want to get into for the benefits is around the disposable income. This is something that people don't really consider, right? So if I if I'm going out, let's just say once a week, and let's just say on average it's eighty euro a week or something, eighty dollars a week. That is one hundred and sixty a fortnight, three hundred and twenty a month. Okay, three hundred and twenty a month is over three k a year or whatever it is, right? Now with that extra disposable income, you know you may not have 
all of it or whatever but you definitely will have more you're able to do things that you really do enjoy so if i don't necessarily enjoy going out all the time then i can use this for other things i can go for dinner i can order a more expensive meal because i know i'm not getting drinks for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 dollars you know this is how it scales you know i can get different things that i enjoy if i want to travel more which is a big aspect of my life like if I'm flying around Asia, if I want to go to Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, I can just go because I know that I don't need the cash to go out all the time. I can put it towards things that I really do enjoy. So I have that aspect of spending things on I truly enjoy and eating meals that are really good for me, as well as training, as well as traveling. All of that aspect is what I kind of think of as the extra stuff of my life, the kind of flavor of my life, if you will, that I'm able to put more time into and more money into because I'm not spending it on stupid shit. That's kind of a long story short. So my overall perspective on this is pretty clear. So if you want to achieve a big goal, I feel like it's the lowest hanging fruit to let you move closer towards it. You can definitely iron out a couple of hours in your week to work on something that's better, or you can take that time to just chill out. You know, you don't need to be this productivity machine that's always after it 24 seven. You can just use that time to relax, spend time with your partner, build better relationships with them, and just talk more often instead of planning the next outing that you're going to go out i think it's very very clear i do think that you can have a piece of boat now if you're going to go out and get smashed it's a completely different story but if you enjoy a glass of red wine with dinner or if you enjoy going out and having an ipa beer or whatever at the weekend that's pretty much fine if it's controlled i just feel like that the irish culture and the way that kind of i was brought up was kind of just the fact that people just drink excessively quite often and that's what i wanted to just cut cold turkey you know by cutting cold turkey you get the full benefits but again i'm not trying to push my agenda on anyone this is just a personal experience that i feel like could be beneficial for someone else as well and as discussed, a lot of the variables in your life do improve. So health, nutrition, sleep, mood, anxiety, fun, all that stuff definitely gets a lot better. You don't have to, you don't have the same feeling as you normally would because you're always feeling about what are the lads getting up to, what are people getting up to. And it's very, very personal to you. So the way I looked at this going forward is the fact that I don't necessarily think I'm not going to be not drinking forever. That's not the goal here. It was that I did a very uh, intense experiment on myself, a personal experiment, and it was kind of, I developed quite a lot from it. I did grow, if you will, from the experience. Maybe I'll find myself in Ibiza in the summer and I'll have a couple of drinks there. And to be honest, if I do, then I'll have worked for it because I'll have worked up the time, let's say, and I was able to make sacrifices in the short term to get a long-term goal of just, you know, being closer to where I want to go. So again, you don't need to give all this up and fucking break the whole thing up for forever. It's just about taking action on something that you know yourself may be hindering you and if it is hindering you then you can cut it back you can go cold turkey like myself i gotta recommend it's good to rip off the bandage or what you can simply do is just go down to once a month twice a month work your whole way down and i guarantee you if you do go cold turkey when you hit one week you're gonna say oh this is pretty good i got a bit of cash in my pocket when you hit one month you're gonna say i start feeling good i start looking a lot better i start better skin all that kind of good stuff and the more you go the more you're gonna roll onto it so that's one thing that i really want to explain and again i don't want to push my agenda on anyone this is my own personal experience so hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you found it valuable and again if you did find it valuable leave a comment down below share me your experience how you feel if you're thinking about doing this in the future as well as liking the video is super helpful to boost the algos and make sure more people see content like this that could help them in the future so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video